Hey everybody, Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon coming at you with an absolutely epic pro revenge story. Shady former colleagues bullied me into quitting a small town teaching job, so I had their entire school shut down. Let's jump right in. Long time lurker, first time poster. Throw away, of course, and I apologize for the long story. This happened a few years ago, but it was recent enough that those deservedly affected by the fallout might still be looking for me and might recognize the events I'm going to describe, so of course names, locations, and other details will have slight alterations. Think of it like transforming a left ked slip-on into a right Louboutin stiletto. Different enough, but still a shoe, and if it fits... I've always been a shy person, and I grew up in a large urban area. In high school, I had friends, but we were the nerdy type and thought of as losers. I was one of two girls in our core friend group of four kids. Of course, we eventually dated the guys in our group. The youngest in our group was one of the boys, Doug, in 9th grade, and the oldest was a boy, Clayton, in 11th. The other girl, Sarah, and I were in 10th. I dated Doug all through high school, for which I was relentlessly teased by people outside of our group because he's a bit more than a year younger than me. Sarah and Clayton married in college and are still happily married five years later. Doug and I, for our part, got married once he finished college and we have been married for almost four years. We have a one-year-old daughter, Raquel. Both Doug and Clayton eventually got careers in IT. Sarah and Clayton have their own one-year-old daughter, Amber. Sarah has a small but thriving home business selling refurbished furniture on eBay that she and Clayton find on weekends. The reason I give so much backstory is that our friend group is pretty isolated. Chalk it up to years of bullying, being made fun of, excluded, you name it. It happened to all four of us in school, even in primary and middle school. Even now, in my later 20s, I don't really have close friends besides Sarah, Clayton, and of course my husband Doug, who is my best friend. This is true, even though we moved all the way to the Midwest for Doug's career, we're still close enough and well off enough that we can regularly fly out to see our friends and vice versa. Doug makes more than enough money to support all three of us on his salary alone, especially in our state, and always says it's okay if I'm a stay-at-home mom. However, in this new environment, I thought I might have a fresh start, to work on being more outgoing as it were. No one in my town knew me from when I was a kid and a total reject. Doug's father passed away and so his mother lives with us and has generously helped take care of Raquel. We all talked it over and agreed I could go back to college to get a teaching certification for my bachelor's degree, math. Fast forward just a few months and thanks to an accelerated program and shortage of math teachers in my area, I got my teaching license quite quickly and easily. I also made a few new girlfriends in the teaching program which helped my self-esteem. So I put out my resume, and within just a few short weeks, I get hired at an independent studies charter school. I was looking to get hired at a regular high school, but whatever. It was a credit recovery school. Basically, the idea was that kids who washed out of the regular school district, or couldn't succeed there for whatever reason, could try succeed in our setting. We hosted grades 9 through 12. Students would make appointments and come in on their own time, meet independently with teachers, be given assignments and projects, and basically earn a legit high school diploma eventually. I knew it was kind of weird to go back to a place, high school, where I never fit in, but I thought it would be totally different from the perspective of an adult. The school was one large classroom the size of a basketball court, with administrative offices, science labs, even an exercise room for PE all around the perimeter. About 50 students' desks were lined around the center of the room in rows, and around these desks were about a dozen teacher desks. Generally, we'd have two teachers per subject area, example, two English, two math, two history, etc., and we each had our own roster of students, and ensured that they visited all teachers for whose subjects they owed credits. Although the school officially had over 200 students on the various rosters, there were rarely more than 10 or so students in the school at any one time, due to different appointments throughout the day. That meant that there was tons of downtime where teachers would just shoot the breeze with one another. The school had a female principal, a male vice principal, and a male counselor. The other math teacher was male, both English teachers were female, both science teachers were male, the PE teacher was a male, art teacher female, and the history teachers were one male and one female. 
there was also a male computer teacher and a female music teacher, both of whom came in once a week. I could see right away from day one that all the teachers were good friends with one another. That's not a bad thing at all. Lunch is at noon every day, and the school shuts down for a whole hour. Typically, the other teachers would all go out to lunch with one another, or break off in twos and threes. I didn't really know anyone, so I didn't take offense to anyone not inviting me to go to lunch with them. I thought, well, maybe give it a few weeks and it will change. I had that old feeling from when I was a kid of being rejected. Still, I was the new person, so I tried not to take it personally. Besides, forming relationships, colleagues included, is a two-way street and I could reach out too. Till then, it was lunch at the desk. Sometimes I'd FaceTime hubby, who usually had lunch at that time too, but I was proud of him for making friends at his own work and tried to minimize taking up his time. I didn't really focus on that too much though, and just did my job. Students tended to like me, and after just a few weeks it became noticeable that my students made more appointments to see me than other teacher students made to see them. Every time a student finished a project or assignment for a teacher, whatever the subject, they would turn it into their main teacher, the one who had the student on their main roster. It soon became clear that students on my roster were finishing their assignments and graduating at a faster rate than my peers. I didn't plan for this to happen, it just turned out that way. Over time, holidays would pass and our school would have mandated social and team building functions, example potluck in the break room, etc. It seems like I was making progress socially. I was always positive and nice to my peers and would be myself around them, try to tell them about me and learn about them. They were being nice to me, too, at least to my face, so I thought I was finally fitting in. One day, however, the principal called me into her office to tell me that someone had told her that I was smug and antisocial, and that it wasn't good for the school environment for teachers to bully one another. I was flabbergasted, and of course my initial reaction was to ask who told her this, but the principal said it was confidential and to just work on being nicer. I didn't want to seem intransigent or defiant, so I apologized for hurting anyone's feelings, but also pointed out that I was trying my very best to fit in, and I had been working there the shortest compared to everyone else, so of course I didn't want to overstep. I also pointed out that students on my roster were graduating at a good pace. I didn't throw shade at any of my colleagues. My principal agreed with me on this and praised me heartily. The vice principal happened to be walking by, and he overheard the principal praising me. He too threw in the comment that I was an exemplary teacher, the students were praising me in private to him, and that the school had big plans for me, especially since we were on pace to outperform another independent studies charter school a few miles away, which competed for the same state funding. This pleased me of course and took the edge off the butthurt of people telling the principal I was not nice. A small, maybe big, red flag was that they told me that students graduating meant massive funding for our school, money which the regular district didn't want the charter school to have, and that if all teachers could get more students to turn in work, we all might get bonuses. I mean, all that is good, but both of them spoke about student graduation only in terms of how it could benefit our own pocketbooks. Ever since I started working at the school, what had originally been five students, ten at the most working in the classroom at a time, became 20 or more, almost every one of them a kid on my roster, every day hanging out for hours and hours doing their work in our quiet classroom environment. I thought this was great because this meant they could graduate sooner and get on with their lives. Gradually, however, I noticed that some of my peers looked resentful when the classroom was so full. I strongly suspect this is because they had grown accustomed to having long stretches of time to simply mess about online at their desks playing with their smartphones, and gossiping. Our school had a policy that unless you were on a break, you had to be at your desk and make yourself available to grade student work in your subject area. They didn't like grading my students' work because eventually credit for that student graduating would go to me, their main teacher. I certainly didn't mind grading work from students who were on other teachers' rosters. That's the whole point of our job. Gradually, I came to realize that the school didn't focus so much on actually teaching the students anything and making sure that their diploma actually meant something than just rubber stamping their work and saying it was satisfactory using the fact that we were licensed, credentialed professionals as official backup. Really, any reasonably intelligent adult or even kid 
could do the type of work some of my colleagues were actually doing. What would happen was, say a kid on my roster is behind 5 credits in English if he wants to graduate. I would then send him to the English teacher to request a packet of English work. Kid would do the work, give it to the English teacher to grade, she would sign off on it, I would input the grade into my computer, and the kid would be one credit closer to graduation. It soon became clear to me that the teachers weren't even actually looking at the packets before giving them a grade, really just pulling grades out of their butts. I would never dream of doing that on any student's math work. That's the way they'd grade for me, but they'd do it in a slow way so as to reduce the speed of students graduating from my roster. As in, they'd let piles of my students' work sit on their desk ungraded while they played Clash of Clans at their desk. I never said anything, and was always polite and friendly to them, even though I knew at least one of them had badmouthed me to the principal. Needless to say, even months into my new job, I wasn't making friends with my coworkers. I was nice to them, and it seemed at face value that they at least respected me on a professional level, at least to my face, so I'd accept that for the time being. The big switch came when the principal actually singled me out at a staff meeting as an exemplary teacher. She said that I had come from Big City and have succeeded to an amazing degree and that I had set a record for how many students were graduating high school on my roster. From that point on, I sensed that people were being cold to me. It felt a lot like high school, except unlike high school, where other girls would openly mock me as a tall, skinny, no butt, no boobs having giraffe, adults did it in colder ways. On rare occasions, where the whole classroom was empty, or if I'd run into groups of them in the break room, they would talk about all these fun things they did together after work, or talk about the big party they were all going to have at such and such venue and how everyone is invited. Except, obviously, well, I didn't really mind, actually. I wasn't going to let them being petty ruin the good feeling I had from helping students and feeling like I was making a difference. I was still very nice to everyone and kept up my positive attitude. Inside, I felt so bad and so left out, however. I didn't tell my husband about basically being shunned at work, and instead, I focused just on my success in getting students to graduate. Anyway, some of my students would actually quietly complain to me that Miss So-and-so doesn't even grade our work. I'd never badmouth my coworkers, especially to the kids. It's important to have a united front, of course. But on the sly, I'd separate those work packets that were clearly not graded properly and look them over myself as best I could. Although I was only licensed to teach math, if, say, a history packet seemed incomplete and yet had a B-plus nice work on the cover, I'd sort of quietly, as diplomatically as I could, staple a new cover sheet to it, ask the student to finish it for real, and submit it again to the teacher. I'd make sure the student asked the teacher to grade it in front of him or her, as he or she was eager to see the results of all their hard work. Although the teachers hated it when my kids did this, I did make sure my students' work was as legitimately graded as possible. Somewhat surprisingly, students appreciated my determination that they didn't BS their way through what was obviously a BS school. When it came to the other teacher students coming to me with math packets, I did the professional thing and actually went over the packets and gave the tests and quizzes as prescribed in the employee handbook for our school and as is mandated by our state. The other teachers didn't like this, I guess because they were used to teachers just rubber stamping the work as passing regardless of whether or not it was competently done. Invariably, teachers preferred to send their math kids to the other teacher because he had no problem just breezing through the packets as if they were flip books and assigning whatever grade he dreamed of. However, even though for him to just scribble C+, please show work for each equation, on packet covers took no time at all and he could go back to searching up dating profiles on OkCupid, I found out eventually that he was already married he resented the fact that he graded perhaps 20 math packets in one day, whereas I graded maybe 5, because I graded them and assigned the tests and everything, which of course took time. Eventually, other teachers began to grumble too, how I was taking too long to grade their kids' packets and thus slowing down their students' graduations, whereas mine were graduating relatively faster. I began to hear rumors that kids only came to see me, especially the boys, because they wanted to screw me. Naturally, the rumors eventually spread that I actually was banging the kids. Other rumors spread that I was unqualified to be a math teacher. 
What was a woman doing being a math teacher anyway? I was just trying to hook up with young studs. All sorts of nonsense. Still, more rumors spread that I was cheating with my graduation rates and that it was all fraud somehow. My husband, Doug, had actually come to see me on a couple of occasions at the school to go with me to doctor's appointments so the staff knew what he looked like. One day, I had my phone out on my desk when Clayton called me to tell me the news that he and Sarah were coming to visit next month. Unfortunately for my reputation at that school, Clayton's contact avatar showed hugely on my phone screen when he called in the middle of the day and one of my busybody co-workers happened to be walking by my desk, saw my phone, and made a face of barely concealed contempt. Needless to say, rumors soon spread that I was cheating on Doug with some other young man, along with all the high schoolers who I supposedly worked with off the clock. Still, I tried to grind it out. But I would plan my revenge too, if it came to that. I'm mature, but I'm not above getting even. I went through 12 years of crap growing up. I'd be damned if I resigned myself to a lifetime of crap as a grown-up. I flatter myself that I was at least sort of cool in college. Heh. <laughs> First thing I did was let my principal know what was going on. My plan was, if she addressed the bullying at a future meeting and put an end to it, then hey, I wouldn't even need to get revenge. I'd just go back to doing my job and minding my own business. I was kind of hoping the principal would back me up, as up until now, aside from the red flag about being obsessed with the school getting money and not with students learning anything, she seemed friendly enough, if a bit detached from her school's day-to-day -day operations. I told her that students would tell me quietly that Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. What's-her-name told them that I was dating a student or cheating on my husband. More than one kid would tell me these kinds of things. I knew my kids weren't trolling me, as over the months I'd established a good rapport with all of them. Principal basically gaslights me and tells me I'm being paranoid. It's a high school, she says. In high schools there are rumors, it's part of the territory. Yeah, I reply, but the rumors are usually from students, not adults. She doesn't really address this, other than to tell me that I needed to grow up and not let petty things like supposed rumors get to me. She tells me to be the bigger person. Nah, I should have mentioned that I had brought my cell phone in with me and had been recording the principal's responses to what I had been saying, which was good for the case I was building because, as if on cue, the vice principal comes walking by once again. World's greatest Chad, coffee mug in hand. Oh hey, Mr. Vice Principal dude, come in really quick. I thought principal was going to tell him about my concerns, about the rumors that I was basically both an adulterer and also trying to go to jail for having illicit fun with minors, but no, instead, principal and vice principal complained to me that I'm being too thorough in my grading of math work from my students on other teachers' rosters. I explained that I'm trying to do my job according to the employee handbook they themselves had given me, and according to the two-day training seminar, standard for all teachers of independent study schools where I live, they had mandated I attend prior to my first day of employment. They tell me that I needed to play ball and that our task was to get these kids out the door with that diploma in hand. I counter with, what good is a diploma if they don't actually know any history or how to read or how to use the scientific method or whatever? Principal actually calls me a pretentious wannabe female Jamie Escalante, famous calculus teacher. They both strongly encourage me to use my professional judgment, example, place my teaching license in jeopardy, by assigning passing marks to work that is clearly not passing. I get all of this on record, and I make sure to email a backup copy of the MP3 to my outside email address. Our school plays it slick when it comes to the school board inspecting our paperwork. Whenever the principal knows that the state is coming for an inspection of our packets, an audit they like to call it, they have each of us take extra special care to grade about three or four packets in our subject area very thoroughly. These packets are placed in a filing cabinet in the middle of the classroom, so as to imply they represent our average work. All other packets with BS grades on them go in these other file cabinets in back that the school never invites the inspectors to look at. We tend to empty out students' folders into these file cabinets after they graduate. The school had a policy that once a packet was three months old, we only had to retain the cover with the teacher grades and comments to save cabinet space thereby destroying evidence that the actual packet behind the cover was never actually done properly. The phony cabinet in the middle of the classroom representative active work. The only two sorts of friends I made at this school 
were the music teacher and computer teacher who taught small labs only once a week, and both of whom had other full-time jobs and were married, not to each other, and had families. The music teacher taught at a local community college and did the charter school just as a side hustle, and the computer guy consulted and made six figures. I therefore didn't feel too much guilt about what I was going to do. Still, I quietly hinted at my plan to both of them on the day they came to campus, and both of them were like, do it. After getting the principal and vice principal, and the counselor too, who also just so happened to be walking by, all encouraged me to basically commit academic fraud, I thought, F them. I suspected and later confirmed that they had a secret buzzer system to surreptitiously call one another from their desks, which is why they always happened to be available at the same time when necessary or convenient. I snuck toward the filing area where all of our BS student work credits were stored, and day by day over a period of three months took video of hundreds of packet covers, all of them labeled with academic grades, teacher comments, and teacher signatures. I of course also continued the videos to show page after page of blank work and incomplete work, nonsensical work, English packets especially were rife with ridiculous gibberish, sometimes even mocking the teachers like, Miss English teacher lady is a b and she doesn't even grade our work, laugh out loud, and the cover would have Miss English teacher lady's signature along with A+, fantastic, you are such a talented writer. Sure enough, after three months, the secretary, who was also kind of snooty and played on her smartphone and uploaded selfies to Instagram all day, even though she was like 55, shedded mountains of bogus work and filed only the covers. Throughout this whole time, I'd been slyly walking around the classroom in such a way that other teachers would think I wasn't trying to look at them or what was on their computer, and I'd catch video of them on Facebook or Plenty of Fish or shopping on eBay and they'd have a student interviewing right in front of them. What the actual F? At home one day, I asked Doug how to do a remote microphone that I could control from far away. He's like, what for? Are you trying to be James Bond? But he's so smart and it's child's play for him, so he personally rigs one for me at work. Basically, it's like a wireless mark that isn't a detachable Bluetooth and he sets up a way for me to turn it on and off from far away. I'm like, that's awesome, can I have 10? He smiles, but he asks no questions because he's awesome like that. Next day, he has a dozen of them. I want it so that there's no way for my devices to appear when the other teachers turn on their Bluetooth earpieces. I'm always the first at work because my coworkers tend to be irresponsible asses, so even though everyone is supposed to be at their desks by 8am, most of them drift in at 8.10, 8.20, and so on. I'm there at 7.30 just in case. I know the code how to get in on the keyless entry side door, let myself in, and slip a mic beneath everyone's desk. Each mic has this mini watch battery that's supposed to last quite a long time. I bring my old smartphone that I don't use anymore and make sure it has a huge capacity SD card that my husband got for me installed. I connect it as a wireless audio input for the mics. I then hit record, and every day for two weeks, I hear the teachers, most of whom are wearing Bluetooth headsets, ever since it became uncool to yell gossip across the room, talking trash all day long, totally unrelated to work, saying the most inappropriate things about other teachers, the principal, even the kids. Some of the things these middle-aged women would say about what they would love to do with that young blonde god over there made me want to puke. Of course, these teachers are too stupid to simply text one another if they really want to sneak around in trash talk. To them, the Bluetooth thing is easier. It stung, but I knew I struck gold when I heard them spreading false rumors about me, calling me an effing bee, a pretentious big city loser with no friends, they'd definitely get me fired. They'd also talk about how they didn't grade, and just pretended to, and that they were so glad they could sit all day instead of teach in the district, how it was a cushy job, how they were tricking state inspectors during audits, every day during my lonely lunches when they all went off to, I don't know, Applebee's, I loaded the previous day's mp3s into my real phone and edit out the dead air and keep all of the good stuff. I then emailed these as separate dated files to my outside email address. This whole time I continued to grade as normal and take my time doing my job correctly. I knew I was going to pull the trigger soon anyway, but the last straw came when my latest student finished her last credit, coincidentally a math one that I graded thoroughly, and now had enough credits to graduate. Every time a student graduates, 
We're supposed to blow party horns and give them a little congratulations trophy and they'd get their diploma in the mail a week or two later. Students had the option of attending a school-wide formal graduation at the end of the school year in June if they had graduated any time during that year from September onward. Most tended, however, to go right into the workforce or to the local junior college or state school. So I blew my little party horn for this girl, and everyone in the classroom, students and teachers, claps enthusiastically. The girl's mom and dad and little brother come that day to the classroom and insisted on having a photo with me, and they all gave me a big hug. Later, I reviewed the audio recordings of that day, and when the girl graduated, other teachers were saying I had switched teams and was into eating rug, they also said a lot of really mean things about her and her family, a lot of it totally racist. This family was Hispanic, all the teachers and admin, including me, are white. It just so happened both the music teacher and computer guy were on campus that day, so in true half-baked fashion, at the end of the day when the classroom was empty of students and teachers, had the last five minutes to close down their computers, I walked from teacher to teacher, purse and other small belongings in hand, saying F you, F you, F you, Pass by computer guy, you're cool. Pass by music lady, you're cool. F you, F you, F you. I walked into the principal's office while the other teachers are still in shock. She's at her desk and I know where her little buzzer button is beneath the desk. The computer guy told me about it because he was the one who installed it and said, I'm quitting, I don't want to be part of your criminal school. And just in case the buzzer was just a buzzer and not also a speaker, I pressed the PA button on her wall and said, Mrs. OP is quitting today because you're all a bunch of hateful, unprofessional, mean-spirited a-holes, except Mr. Computer and Miss Music. You're cool. I decided to finally take my darling Doug up on his offer to be at stay-at-home mom, and I'm cool with mother-in-law. She can stay. Epilogue. I emailed our school district superintendent, our city's mayor, state governor, the entire school board, and our local newspaper with all the files of photos, audio, and video I had taken, along with a terse, one-page summary of what had been going on. Within weeks, every single one of the teachers and administrators, except the computer lab guy and music lady, who I made special effort to prove had participated in no wrongdoing, had been fired and had their credentials at least suspended and in most cases revoked outright. Only innocent parties like custodial staff and the like emerged with their reputations unscathed. All of the teachers who worked at that school and had been named in the school board's inquiry as having participated in fraudulent practices were blacklisted from teaching there or anywhere. After a few weeks of initial turmoil, all students currently enrolled at the school were, due to parental pressure, allowed to keep their existing credit completion status Students who had already graduated did not have their diplomas rescinded. All students were given vouchers to enroll at the competing independent charter school down the road. My own former school was shut down, stayed abandoned for a couple months, but eventually turned into an electronics store. All the other stuff happened within a month of my quitting, but I told my hubby about it on the very day I came home. His eyes lit up like Christmas, and the raging justice boner he developed was so hard that I was knocked up with our second child even before my back hit the mattress. Clayton and Sarah thought it was pretty funny. I've since made new friends around town to go along with computer guy and music lady and college friends, especially with other moms. Doug is killing it at work and is thinking of starting his own company. Life is good. Wow, this is one of those stories where you kind of look at the time when you're done and then you realize, my gosh, that was 28 minutes? It doesn't feel like 28 minutes. That story kept me enthralled the whole time that I was narrating it and the first time I read it. Guys, make sure you jump onto Reddit and give OP an upvote for this story. It was amazing. A link to the story and to OP's profile is in the description below. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon. If you're still here listening after 29 minutes, I truly want to thank you. Remember to subscribe, like, and share the video with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.